I'm Stephanie Fulbright. I'm Leslie Eiler-Thompson. And And this this is Church Church Historia. Historia. One of the things that's really beautiful to me is the variety within the Christian tradition. And like to use the word tapestry to describe that variety, that richness that helps us see and hold intention and balance the and of Christianity, right? The central mysteries of Christianity is the incarnation and this idea that Christ was both fully human and fully God. Christianity is not an or religion. It holds a lot of things in tension. And I think the variety of that this tapestry helps us hold that intention within specific denominations or flavors. You may see certain things stressed over others, but it's important that we have all of these. Um, and, and I think that we learn about them and know at least that they're there and can use them to help inspire us to help understand this truly great cloud of witnesses that we have that walks with us, that it is bigger and broader and more diverse than I think we ever thought possible. This is not a dividing. It's not, I I don't want to pick the threads out of the tapestry and unravel it to the point that I have no tapestry anymore, Mm -hmm. but I want to get really close to the tapestry. Mm -hmm. And I want to see that that green actually isn't just green, it's yellow and blue woven together. And that when we stand far back, maybe it does look like this monolith, but the closer we get to it, the more that we can see. And and still maintaining that unity that I think is inherent in the fact that all of these Christian traditions are expressing the same fundamental truths in these different colors and shapes and styles and textures. Okay, so where do we want to start? How about at the beginning? (laughs) Which is a very good place to start. Thank you. I think by the time I was in high school, I was starting to get really interested in theology and apologetics and the why behind my faith and and to a certain degree, the justification of that. And, And there was something about the apologetics tenor about sort of being able to prove to somebody that I that I was right. That was really appealing. C.S. Lewis was my first theologian. Red Mirror Christianity, among among other things. Um, and around that same time for me, I was starting to get interested in medieval history. And you can't study medieval Europe without studying church history. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two are very, very intertwined. That led me ultimately to grad school to get a master's of theological studies focused in church history. And what I realized in grad school was that I really value the work of scholars who are in archives and are publishing work, and I really appreciate the work that they do, but where I feel called to step in is to help share what I've learned with others. I think too often church history is only taught in colleges or maybe Mm -hmm. a select high school class. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different church groups and different Sunday schools that will sort of make forays every now and then. And I really appreciate that. And that's, and that's a great effort. But oftentimes, if you didn't get to take the early church fathers in college, or you didn't get to take a class on the, the rise of high criticism in the 19th century, how are you going to know? Oh, and so right. for me, it's important to try to share what I know and what I find fascinating and what I find found enlivening and enriching. Mm-hmm. What excites me about the past is it was full of people who are just as fully alive as you and I are, who experienced life just as richly as you and I have. You know, when we look back on the past, it becomes self-obvious that of, of course things went this way. But in the moment, nothing was as predefined. You know, the next moment in our lives isn't defined. When you can see that humanity and that full agency and that full aliveness mm-hmm. in people of the past, and especially when we study church history about These were other people with a full, complex, rich faith, just like mine, trying to figure Mm -hmm. out how do we live a life acknowledging God in the presence of God, with God, with God to others, Mm -hmm. you know, shaped and informed by the transforming work of the Spirit. What does that look like? How how does that mean in our everyday lives, in the big crisis of life, in moments of local and national and global crisis? Mm -hmm. 
none of these are struggles that that are entirely unique. The specifics might be unique, but th- this is what it means to walk in faith. Th- this is that great cloud yeah. of, of witnesses who we can draw on and we can mm-hmm. learn from. And so, yes, I get very excited about it. I was a music major in college. One of the first classes I had to take was music history, the first level. And I knew I was going to hate it. And it was paired, you know, you have this linked cohort thing where it's like connect your major to something else. So we would go from music history to world history. And at some point I fell in love with music history. World history, I had such a hard time connecting to any relevance. But music history, because all of a sudden we were listening to music that was being written during that time. Mm -hmm. Our professor is a musicologist and, you know, she's drawing conclusions to say this theme. Does this theme sound familiar? We just studied it last week when Mozart did this thing. And then this composer worked off of that and it suddenly becomes so rich and so surreal. And so during that time, it was just a sort of opening in my mind of understanding that history is alive and there are ways that we can find it and we can see its its living nature. I'm really excited about this season. So we are focusing on Southern Christianities. I had a conception when I came down here of what Southern Christianity was. And for me, I thought it was a singular monolith that looks an awful lot like a, a Holy Roller Southern Baptist tradition. There's a number of of other traditions that also have a presence and a a firm, deep, solid presence here in the South. The Southernism, who are your people, really came to my mind about, we talk about Christianities in the South. As as someone who's lived in the South for 12 years now, I think I have to call myself a Southerner, although I may not sound (laughs) that way. But this is where I live. This is where my friends are. This is my community. Who are my people? So yeah, we talk about Southern Christianities in a way that isn't to divide Christianity. It's to recognize that these different traditions make up the tapestry of a Southern Christian tradition. And there are many colors, and there are many shapes, and there are many sizes in this woven tapestry. But it's the background of our Southern expression as Christians and as believers. The Church Historia podcast is available wherever podcasts can be found and online at churchhistoria.com.